Hello, I'm Manoj Karmakar. In this next presentation, Dr. Yasuyuki Shibata from the Faculty of Medicine of the Nagoya University School of Medicine is going to share his insights into a new technique of performing ultrasound guided mandibular and maxillary nerve blocks using a lateral pterygoid plate approach. I hope you are enjoying the videos that we are bringing to you through ISSPS TV. So do remember to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Also remember to subscribe so that you can get regular notifications of any future uploads. So now enjoy the upcoming video. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kamaka, for polite uh, introduction. Today's uh, first, I would like to uh, review the anatomy of maxillary and mandibular nerves. Without understanding the anatomy of maxillary and mandibular nerve, we cannot understand which case this technique uh, indicated for. Next, uh, I would like to talk about the ultrasound image of infratemporal fossa. And finally, uh, I would like to share the technique of ultrasound guided mandibular and maxillary nerve rocks. The first maxillary nerve. Uh, maxillary nerve is a second division of the trigeminal nerve. It's a pure sensory nerve. It exits from the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rodentum. To, to, to reach the uh, pterygopalatine fossa. Then it runs forward to enter the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. Here, uh, this nerve is uh, called, uh, called the infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve uh, runs on the floor of the orbit to, to reach on the face. Infraorbital nerve is a terminal branch of the maxillary nerve. The infraorbital nerve, oh, sorry. So this is a, a main root of the maxillary nerve. In addition, in the pterygopalatine fossa, and the pterygopalatine ganglion is suspended from the maxillary nerve. Sorry. Maxillary nerve uh, by two roots. The pterygopalatine ganglion is a sympathetic ganglion, but it's a half point of nervous system in the head and neck region because the sensory fibers from the maxillary nerve and the sympathetic fibers from the superior cervical ganglion pass through this ganglion. The maxillary nerve gives off several branches. Here, uh, the point to remember is that there are two types of branches. One is the direct branches of maxillary nerve. It innervates the face and maxillary teeth. The other is the uh, uh, branches passing through the pterygopalatine ganglion. These nerves uh, innervate the nasal cavity and palate. Middle meningeal nerves uh, branches off the maxillary nerve in the middle cranial fossa, and it's dis distributed to the meninges of the middle cranial fossa. Posterior superior alveolar nerve branches off from the maxillary nerve in the pterygopalatine fossa. It lands on the surface of the maxillary tuberosity. Then it penetrates the maxillary tuberosity to supply the mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus and the maxillary molar teeth and adjoining buccal gingiva. The infraorbital nerves surprise the skin of 
lower eyelid, nasal side wall, anterior cheek, and upper lip. The infraorbital nerves gives off the two branches. One is the middle superior alveolar nerve. It lands on the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus to supply the mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus, premolar teeth, and the adjoining part of the buccal gingiva. Anterior superior alveolar nerve runs on the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus to supply the mucus of the sinus. The canine, canine the incisors, and the adjoining part of the labial gingiva. The nasal branch of the, of the anterior alveolar nerve enters the nasal cavity to supply the lateral wall, the floor, and the septum of the anterior nasal cavity. This slide uh, summarizes the sensory innovation of the infraorbital nerves. Zygomatic nerve branches off from the maxillary nerve and runs along the lateral wall of the orbit. While it passes through the zygomatic bone, it's divided into two branches. One is the zygomatic fascia, and the other is zygomatic, zygomatic temporal nerve. So this nerve supplies the skin of the che cheek and temporal. Both the septum and the lateral wall of the posterior nasal cavity are innervated by the maxillary nerve. In detail, on the septum, the superior septum, a superior septum, uh, innovate, septum is innervated by the medial posterior superior nasal nerve. The inferior septum is innervated by nasopalatine nerve. On the lateral wall, the superior and the middle con nasal conture are innervated by the lateral posterior superior nasal nerve. The inferior nasal conture is innervated by greater palatine nerve. Remember, these nerves are branches of the maxillary nerve passing through the pterygopalatine ganglion. And they enter the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen. Sphenopalatine foramen is located posterior to the middle nasal concha on the lateral wall. Nasopalatine nerve, nerve uh, innervates the anterior hard plate as well as inferior nasal septum. It appears on the anterior, anterior uh, hard plate through the incisive foramen after it travels on the inferior nasal septum. Greater palatine nerve is distributed to the hard palate except for the anterior hard palate through the greater palatine canal. Lesser palatine nerve is distributed to the soft palate and um, palatine tonsil and uber uh, via the lesser palatine canal. This figure summarizes the sensory innovation of the maxilla. Uh, upper lip and upper lip and the incisor canine and plemora and adjoining the uh, labial gingiva is innervated by infraorbital nerve. Maxillary mora and uh, adjoining gingiva is by the posterior superior, superior alveolar nerve. Anterior hard plate is by the nasopalatine nerve. Hard plate is innervated by the uh, greater palatine nerve. Soft palate Soft palate is by the lesser palatine nerve. Mandibular nerve is the third division of the trigeminal nerve. It contains the sensory fibers and 
motor fibers of mastication. It exits from the middle cranial fossa through the foramen oval to reach the infratemporal fossa. Here, it gives off several branches. Orchial temporal nerve uh, branches of the mandibular nerve. It's split at the origin around the middle meningeal artery. Then it forms a single nerve to surprise the temporal mandibular joint, the anterior superior part of the ear and temporal. At the level of zygomatic arch, it's accompanied by the superficial temporal artery. Long buccal nerve innervates the skin and the mucosal membrane of cheek and the buccal gingiva of morals. Inferior alveolar nerve enters the mandibular, mandibular through the mandibular foramen. It innervates the mandibular, mandibular teeth and the adjoining buccal gingiva. The terminal branch of this nerve is the mental nerve. The mental nerve appears on the chain through the mental foramen and innervates the labial gingiva and the skin of the lower rib and chin. Oh, sorry. The lingual nerve supplies the lingual side gingiva, anterior two sides of the tongue, and oral floor. The taste fiber uh, of the facial nerve travels in the lingual nerve. Then it moves to the coda tympani. This slice uh, shows the sensory innovation of the load jaw, lower jaw, mandible and man, mandibular teeth is innervated by the inferior alveolar nerve, lingual side of gingiva and anterior two side of tongue, tongue is by the lingual nerve, lower lip and labial gingiva from the incisor to premora is uh, by the mental nerve cheek and buccal gingiva of mora is by the long buccal nerve. Okay, next I move on the scanning technique for the infrazygomatic approach of maxillary and mandibular nerve blocks. The, land, the important landmarks uh, are the lateral pterygoid plate and maxillary tuberosity. The reason is that the gap between the between these two structures is a pterygoid, pterygoid fossa where the maxillary nerve is located. The other is that the foramen oval is located just posterior to the lateral pterygoid plate, so we can aim a needle to maxillary and mandibular nerve by using these two structures. But uh, there is a one important point. We have to visualize the uppermost of the lateral pterygoid plate. Here, uh, I will tell you have to visualize the uppermost lateral pterygoid plate using, uh, using a water phantom. First, uh, you place the probe uh, just below the zygomatic arch and parallel to the zygomatic arch to, to visualize the horizontal view of the infratemporal fossa. Look at the water phantom image. Okay, uh, this is a maxillary tuberosity, and this is a uh, here is a uh, lateral pterygoid plate. At this level, the lateral pterygoid plate is very small and it's in contact with the maxillary tuberosity. So it looks like a leg. 
once you detect this bony line, tilt up to aim the beam in the cranial direction above the lateral pterygoid plate until the skull base comes to the image. At the level of skull base, you can see anything uh, except for the inferior orbital feature because of acoustic shadowing. Once you get the image of the skull base, next tilt down the probe until the lateral pterygoid plate comes back to the image. When the lateral pterygoid plate comes back to the image for the, for the first time while you are tilting down the probe, it is the uh, uppermost of the lateral pterygoid plate. Okay, this is an ultrasound image of the lateral pterygoid plate. Here is a maxillary velocity, and here is the lateral pterygoid plate. Now we can see the gap. This gap is a pterygoid, uh, pterygoid uh, fossa. Next, we have to understand the muscles, muscles of mastication. When we put the probe below the zygomatic arch, the master muscle is visualized as the outermost layer. Look at the right uh, figure. Next, the zygomatic arch is removed. The coronoid process is located beneath the master muscles and temporary muscle is uh, attached to the coronoid process. So uh, on this image, the patient uh, closed the mouth and coronoid process come to the image uh, with acoustic shadowing. Now the patient opens the mouth and the coronary process goes out of the image. So uh, this triangle shape is a master muscle. And this is a temporary muscle. Temporary muscle is located uh, beneath the anterior part of the master muscle. Next, look at this part, okay? This muscle is a lateral pterygoid muscle. So uh, at this point, master muscle, temporary muscle, lateral pterygoid muscle overlaps just anterior to the condylar process. So this muscle is a lateral pterygoid muscle. Now the temporary muscle and coronoid process is removed and we can see the lateral pterygoid muscles here. This muscle has a two head, superficial head and inferior head. Next, uh, in this figure, the lateral pterygoid muscle is removed. And we can see the lateral pterygoid muscle attaches to the lateral pterygoid plate. And uh, also we can see the medial pterygoid muscles. Okay, now uh, this, you can understand the mastication muscles. Outermost layer is a master muscle, and middle layer is a temporary muscle. And deep layer is a lateral pterygoid muscles. In, on this image, the medial pterygoid muscle is not visible. And here is the condylar process. Maxillary artery runs in a superior medial direction between the lateral pterygoid muscle and temporary muscles. So we have to always check the maxillary artery before we insert a needle. And if the maxillary artery is located on the needle trajectory, we, move, we have to move the probe 
to to get out of the maxillary artery of the on uh, from the needle trajectory. Preparation and position. I usually use uh, large convex probe. Large convex probe uh, enables us to understand the ultrasound anatomy of, of the infratemporal fossa. As for needle, I usually use a 100 millimeter insulated, insulated needle. 80 millimeter is also okay. If we use a insulated needle, uh, we can reduce the risk of maxillary artery puncture. And position is the supine position with the face turned towards the contralateral side with the mouth open. If we do a maxillary and mandibular nabrock under the GA, we need a mouth opener. As for injection of injection point of mandible nabrock, I usually position the needle tip on the posterior border of the lateral pterygoid plate and inject a local anesthetic here. The local anesthetic spread towards the mandible nerve. Of course, uh, you aim the needle directly to the mandible nerve, but in this case, you have to be careful because uh, this area uh, near the foramen obar is venous rich. In many cases, uh, I, I see the blood back flows through the needle. This is a movie of the mandible nerve broke. First, I visualize the uh, skull base. Okay, this is the skull base. Here is a uh, uh, inferior orbital fissure. And now I visualize the uh, uh, uppermost lateral pterygoid plate and check the maxillary artery. And I insert a needle and touch the posterior border of the maxillary, uh, the lateral pterygoid plate and inject a local anesthetic here. Okay, as for injection point of maxillary nerve, I insert a needle in the posterior to medial direction and insert a needle up to two to three millimeter into the pterygoid fossa and inject a local anesthetic here. If the local anesthetic spread into the pterygoid fossa, we can see the local anesthetic spread. Okay, this is the movie of the maxillary nabrock. I insert a needle in a posterior to medial direction. And now I just enter the needle into the pterygoid fossa and inject the local anesthetic here. We can see the spread, we can see the local anesthetic spread. Sometimes I use a micro convex probe. In that case, we can insert a needle in a lateral to medial direction. We have to be careful be, uh, that is, uh, we shouldn't insert a needle deep into the, uh, into the uh, needle, into the uh, pterygoid fossa, because there is a risk of optic nerve injury. Can you see the needle tip here? When the patient has a, a limitation of mouth opening, superzygomatic approach is better than the uh, infrazygomatic approach because we don't need uh, open the patient mouth. Put the probe above the zygomatic arch and tilt down the probe. Then we can uh, visualize the lateral uh, pterygoid plate and maxillary tuberosity. And in this approach, uh, out of plane needle is better because the 
uh, window to access to the uh, injection point is very narrow. And in the case that uh, tumor is located in the temporal, in the infratemporal fossa, we have to select the greater protein canal approach. Greater protein fossa is located near the second and third molar, just anterior to the uh, pterygoid humerus. And also uh, the greater protein fossa has a cone shape. So we can easily localize the, this, this fossa by feeding the, uh, feeding the mucosal membrane sinking by a stick. The length of the canal is about 29 millimeters. So as for needle, we have to select the 25 to 30 millimeter needle with the needle shaft bent at an angle of 45 degree. And insert a needle into the canal gently. Okay. And inject a two to five mil. Okay. So uh, as for maximum nabrock, uh, we don't in, in some case uh, we don't need an ultrasound. Thank you.